here in Edgewood, New Mexico, and we're doing the mail-in shoe for the American Farriers Journal, and they'll be doing that contest at the, at the summit, at this year's International Hoof Care Summit. And the sponsor of this event is gonna be Victory Racing Plates. This, the mail-in shoe this year is gonna be a side bone shoe, and it's made out of three eighths by three quarters by 11 and a half inches long. It, uh, we'll give the measurements at the end, but it's it, basically, it's one of the most practical shoes that I nail on. It's a very helpful shoe. And uh, just for helping older horses kind of move laterally without uh, messing with the trim, you can kind of put a little bit of the trim in the shoe. And just a very practical shoe and good luck. We're gonna mess with the medial heel first. We're gonna do a little bit of a bump. We're gonna upset probably about two and three quarters, three inches, and we're gonna give a little bit of lift to the medial side. So we're gonna make a ramp going from, the shoe is a spiral shoe, so we're gonna add material to this side and take away from this side. So we're gonna do a couple heats on the medial side first. We're just gonna bump up the end. You want to have a little bit more material than you think you're going to need, so you want to constantly be nailing it up. And you're just trying to make a nice block on the end. Remember, if you just keep hitting after it's bent, all you're doing is bending and you're not bumping. constantly flatten the foot surface and the ground surface because it'll get kind of a wrinkle in the center where you upset on both sides. Unfortunately, most of the bumping happens and upsetting when it's almost cold because it doesn't want to wrinkle so bad. So, that's why you want to do a good amount of that right now and kind of finish it out nice. So what I'm trying to do is make sure there's no wrinkle in there. I've got a nice wedge, all four sides. And now I'll put a heel on it and uh, kind of draw it up to a diamond shape and be done with the medial side. Flatten it up and just revisit it again. Just keep on blending those edges in. Then I'm just going to come here and kind of lean the material and lean the hammer. And that picks up that material. Then come back and try and get that heel done one more time. Now we'll go to the lateral side. On the lateral heel, what we're going to do is just make a circle. Because our safety is going to kind of put the check in for us. So got a circle there. So now I'm just gonna hold it and I'll start putting the outside shaping on the branch. What I want to do 
that since I'm safe in knife blade in this edge, I only want to narrow up my stock from the inside of the web so that I don't make it mushroom again. So I'm just going to take and narrow up the inside edge of the stock. So now I've got a line started and it'll take a couple heats to get that put in there. I always kind of come back and revisit that heel to just keep it in check and come here. Redo my knife blade. Come off the inside. And get it narrowed back up again. This gets you some height too, which kind of helps your cause in making the shoe. Most of that done, and we're back to our original length. What we'll do now is a little bit more just to finish out the knife blade, clean up the heel, and then we'll crack the toe. But we'll go one more heat. Packing that heel back in, just making it to where it just stays nice and checked so that it doesn't get away from you. Getting the straighter you can keep this piece of bar stock at this point, the easier it is when you come back here and you create this line. The reason that you want to do this in a straight is because when you bend it, it'll rip everything and make it really look nice and clean. It'll really make it, when you make that radius, it'll pull that line and really bring it together nice. All right, you can, now I'm where I want to be. I'm going to crack the toe and we'll mark the inside toenail. I'm just going to try and get a nice even toe. I can make the lateral branch grow at any given time, but the inside I've already committed to the wedge. So. Safe this off. I mean, flatten this out. I'm sorry. I'm gonna come in here and really flatten this out. And I'm gonna clean up my line on the top edge. There we go. I'll just tighten up my toe just a little bit. And now I'm ready to make my medial branch. All right, what we're gonna do is just kind of clean up this branch, clean up this heel. This will be the last time I get a good look at the heel with a being in the way, and then I'll just crack my branch. All right, I'll, what I'll do is now that I've got the branch bend, I'm gonna scribe for my medial, square across my toe, and that's where my medial toenail is gonna be. So if you look, I make a square, it's a box. It goes from here, and my toenail is directly underneath my branch where my heel ends up. So now I, that's how I know 
I've got enough shoe and I'm right where I want to be. I mark for my puller in. Then I come up here and I just kind of sweeten everything up. Hem it a little bit. So now I'm ready to fold that. Revisit that heel a little bit. Alright, so now I've got everything, open this up, and I'm just going to hit where it comes off the horn and bring it on around. Just keep on closing it up, take a look, and you can see now I got, I want to put my two toenails, my two lateral nails in the lateral branch. What, you, what, what you've got is most of the time a horse that needs a side bone shoe has, it folds pretty high in the foot. So back here is usually not good nailing. So we put two good solid nail holes in the toe and I think that's plenty. I'm just gonna come in here. Now that I got a nice bend, just come around the corner and just clean up that line a little bit. It's always easier to do this when it's cold because you can create a line and you can see better. When it's hot, when you have a missed blow, it's a little bit more catastrophic. And now we'll punch that lateral two nails. I'll punch in my nail holes. Always punch them from both directions and you're closer to making a, a square. This is set up for an E4 slim. Come back over here. Come around. Pop everything loose. Get things flat and then just kind of come around the whole thing and create that nice line. what we call running your edges and I'm gonna when I hit the top edge here I'm hitting the bottom edge or the inside ground surface of the other side I tilt it here and I'm basically making an X this brings all my lines together and it smooths up the arc so here same thing I'm, I'm bringing my lines together this creates a lot less rasping and a lot cleaner lines one more time, is just come in the back and flatten it up and that pushes everything to the surface. And then finish it out with my fuller end.
You want to clean up these edges? Draw a file in a little bit. And then clean up these outer edges. And we're pretty well ready to go on that. All right. Again, we're gonna run these edges. We're gonna hold it at an angle, and we're just gonna go right on through the toe. Make nice, clean lines. You can see it pops the slide loose, which makes it nice before you start flattening to have a nice, clean surface. Come and flatten this up really nice. I got a little bit bigger head stamp. Now finish off the nail hole with a bigger head stamp. Then you take the sandbox and that really put some crisp lines in there. Now go splat and that creates your nice ridge. is on it. Here's the, the finished product for the American Farrier's Journal Victory Race and Plate Mail-In Shoe. The specs for the shoe are going to be in the AFJ and all the measurements and all the stipulations and the rules and the EE head, it's bore slim, all that stuff will be in the American Farrier's Journal article and that's a how-to. The steps are just to be something to go by to give you a starting point, but for the most part, it's it, it's you use your imagination and try and make it to the specs given. Uh, the judging criteria, obvious, will be: is it nail hole? nails down center of stock? We want to have two on the lateral, three on the medial. 
uh, the forging aspects, it's going to be safed off all the way to the medial toe. It's going to be fullered on the lateral. Flat will come into it, but flat is not going to be the end all. I think it's going to be, does it measure and are the nails fit? And do they, are the nails center of stock? Those are priority judging aspects. If there's slag on it, stuff like that, people get mad when an ugly shoe does well, but sometimes ugly shoes have good basics, nail fit, nail placement, and then size. Because if a shoe doesn't fit at all, it can't be nailed on. So size will be right up there. Like a lot of times it goes back and forth. It goes from size to nail fit, nail fit, nail placement. And then whenever they just don't measure, you can't use them. So you're, it's like you're fitting a foot and those specifications will be in the AFJ article.